Hi, I'm William Vokey. Please make a donation to Carnegie's annual fund. Your donations directly support programs like the video you're about to watch. These are difficult times. Help keep alive these voices for ethics. Visit CarnegieCouncil.org. Click the heading, Mark Support. Thanks. And I believe that it is now generally accepted that the strategy of containment by threat or of, of sanction or force of arms has a limited shelf life, one which is fast approaching. It needs to be replaced by a strategy of dialogue, but it needs to be more than just scratching the surface. The West needs, quite simply, to open dialogue with its foes, whether these are the distinct sets of the Taliban in Afghanistan and Pakistan, which are not the same organization, <coughs> however much we are told they are, or uh, Hamas in Gaza and the West Bank. Military intervention may continue to be required, but there has to be a realization that there can be no comprehensive outcomes in any of these particular theaters, which will not, in the end, have to include those elements of, of whom uh, I, I spoke just now, but to whom, at the moment, we will not speak. You can't stabilize Afghanistan in the long term without involving, in some way, the Taliban. And the Taliban are not uh, a, a, a monolithic structure. There are different types of Taliban within them. But you have to accept that they are part of the political DNA of Afghanistan, and if you are to find a political settlement, they have to be part of it. You can't create a viable and autonomous Palestinian state living alongside Israel without involving Hamas, who represent on any view a very large proportion of the people of whatever that Palestinian state is going to be. I mean, I came to this uh, uh, realization when many years ago I was the political minister in Northern Ireland who was asked by our then Prime Minister John Major to go and engage with the IRA, something I may say ironically the United States administration have been pressing us to do for some time, although they're not quite as keen now on talking to perceived terrorists as, uh, 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 as they were then. Uh, and I did so, and it was only when I began to do so I realized how uh, true it was that there was no solution in that troubled area of the world unless you somehow involved all those elements who at the end of the day were going to have to be part of that solution. And I believe that same argument is also true in those other areas uh, I have mentioned. The opening of dialogue with Syria after the years of ostracization is already beginning to pay regional dividends, just as the engagement policies of Turkey are beginning to bring other hitherto hostile elements in from the cold. What is key, as I know personally, is the fact that these elements themselves wish to be engaged with by the West. They wish to be talked to, and perhaps more importantly, they wish to be listened to. And I can say that because certainly in the case of one lot of them, I have been talking to them myself over the last three years. That's what networking means. It means talking, it means listening. And what is really true, and in my view frightening, is that if we don't do it in the West, someone else will go and do it instead.